Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's always great to wake up in the morning and know that you're going to be here to watch. And uh, today is going to be a fun one. My mom's been requesting this for like two weeks, and I don't know why. I mean, I do know why, but it was kind of strange that she did because she has no interest in country music whatsoever, and this place is kind of known for country music. We're going to a place called the Palomino, and there's a little bit of a story of the Palomino, so of course I'm going to go, but it was also used in Every Which Way But Loose. The classic, classic Clint Eastwood movie. And since I have a little Clyde of my own, who's the co-star of this thing, I figured, yeah, let's do some Clyde. So, I also wanted to let you guys know that this coming Sunday, at the uh, Walt Barn over in Griffith Park, on Crystal Springs Road, Bob Gurr is going to be there, and they're going to have the barn open, and I plan on being there about 1 o'clock. So if any of you would like to meet me, if you'd like to be on the vlog, if you'd like to meet Bob Gurr, if you'd like to go see the Carrollwood Barn, get over there! Come say hi! I'm going to be there. Breck's never got to see it. Breck has got some free time, and he wanted me to let him know next time there was an event going on there or something he could see, and this is the time. So I'm going to go get Clyde, a.k.a. Jaw, and we're going to go hit the park for a little while, and then... I'm going to go hit some of the locations from Every Which Way But Loose. One of my all-time favorite Clint Eastwood movies. I loved the old westerns, especially like um, High Plains Drifter and things like that, but I always really loved Dirty Harry, and I loved Every Which Way But Loose in Any Which Way You Can. Philo Beto is like, I, I always have an affinity on movies to like the, the loner, and whenever you put Clint Eastwood or Charles Bronson in a 70s movie, I'm in. Well, there he is. He knows I'm talking about him. He knows that one of us, or two of us, are going to the park today. Well, I brought Jaw up to the park, and it is all mud. I mean, I tried to walk through the whole, any, any, to find any dry spot, and it was all mud. Pure mud, like an inch of water deep, so. Figured we just come up here and look around, then we're gonna take off. Oh, Stella, no! So you okay, sorry. bud? Stella, he no, just got scared. Way too little. Come on, come on. You okay? That was the uh, that was the first time a dog's ever attacked Jaw. Luckily, I always keep him kind of tight on the leash, so I'm able to get him out of there quick if if I even sense anything. But we got him away from that dog immediately. That was crazy. Wow, 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 Come on over here. If you can believe it, guys, this is the, uh, this is the diner where the, uh, the Black Widows end up getting into a fight with the, uh, the truck driver here, right here in the parking lot. They end up having that whole fight right here. And actually... Looks like this place is closed up for good, or or at least for today. This was where all the scenes were, inside as well. Check that out. <laughs> so you would have seen Philo Beto and Lynn Halsey Taylor inside of there, and you would have seen some of the Black Widows trying to pick a fight with Orville. This is also, I love this because this is where you see the, uh, the motorcycles are parked over here and when the, uh, when the semi comes in, he comes in right from there. And boom! Now actually, most of the fight scenes were right here. You see a lot of the Black Widows fighting right here in front of this, and it actually looked pretty much the same. It wasn't called this in the movie, but I kind of love the fact that look how old all this stuff is. It's pretty awesome. And right here is where we would have seen the, uh, the truck come in and just boom! Get this little done right there. Good! So much for the Black Widows of Pacoima. Let's go take some more looks inside. I mean, since I'm here. Now what's kind of cool is, while they're doing the fight scene, 
If you pay close attention, you can actually see the address to the building. And that's kind of how I was able to find it. I just, I started Googling that address and the name of the movie, and then it eventually, you know, obviously it popped up with the, uh, the street name. There it is. And I actually, my plan was, um, I was hoping this place would be open because I was gonna uh, go inside and have a cup of coffee. And it looks like, I mean, there's some dirty napkins here. It looks like maybe they use it still for productions or it's just closed recently or it's just closed for today. I don't know, it's a Friday. Yeah, the neon lights are open. Look at that. I mean, the neon lights are on, so I don't know. Pretty cool to me, though. You know me, guys. This is the kind of stuff I love, so... Seeing the, uh, the iconic diner fight scene from Every Which Way But Loose. That's just magic to me. That's not the only place we're going today. I wish... I wish I could tell you that part of our trip today was going to Philo Beto's house where uh, Orville and Orville's ma live, but I have looked for days and I cannot find that address. I absolutely cannot find that address. So if anybody can help me find the address, let me know and I'd love to go. I found one guy had made a video with no sound going to the place, but he doesn't say have anything in the comments where it's at, nothing. You just see him driving down the street and turning in. Spread out! Let's go to the next location. The next place we're going to go to is where, uh, where Philo and Clyde are riding in the pickup truck and the two bikers pull up next to him. And right there, actually, before we take off, that's the door that you see uh, the waitress and the head of the Black Widows. You'd have seen them looking out those windows. And the, uh, the fight, they would have actually come out through here. Had that whole fight right there. Now I'm gonna try and hurry up and do this because my whole drive here, every couple of minutes or so, I'd hit a patch of rain. So I have a feeling rain's coming. Well, this caliber collision right here used to actually be a car lot. And uh, you get a little bit of a glimpse at it when you see uh, Philo Beto and Clyde parked right here. Waiting for this light to change. And the two bikers pull up right beside him and that's when they make a comment and Clyde flips them off. And you can actually see that in the background. And uh, the two bikers make another couple of comments. Then they throw something at Clyde. And the chase is on, baby. Because then you see uh, over here at this little triangle. That's where you see the two bikers take off. And you see Philo take off after him. And then he'll, he ends up circling around that little triangle where all the traffic is. ends up coming right back through here, cuts across, and then ends up shooting right up this street again, where the chase takes off. Now right here behind me is actually where they, you would have seen the car and the two motorcycles go flying around the circle. Let's go take a look at it. You would have seen them, uh, Philo, make that big U-turn right there, right there where that car is, right around the red zone. He would have flipped around, and just like this guy is going to do, Philo and his truck would have been doing the same thing. Now over here you can see the clear skies, but look at what we got coming. Well, we've made it to our next location for every which way but loose and this actually is way more than just a location this was this was the palomino club
Palomino Club was started in 1949. And this was known as the Western Bar of the West. Like the West Coast, this was it. This was the cowboy bar that everybody played at. It was not uncommon to see the Flying Burrito Brothers here, Linda Ronstadt, Merle Haggard would hang out here. Just about anybody who was anybody that was in the country scene, they were playing here. Throughout all the 50s, throughout the 60s, throughout the 70s, and then and finally the mid 90s it shut down. But what a crazy story this has because like I said, not only is it the Palomino from Every Which Way But Loose, but once it started to lose its appeal for country bands, because it, it really only has a capacity for like 400 people, it turned into a kind of a punk, punk bar. And a lot of the SST bands would play here. Like uh, one of the big ones that I know of, and I'd be, I'd be in a lot of trouble if I don't mention it for my friend Neil Jones, Mike Watt and Firehose, recorded an album here in 1985. This is where you would have seen Philo Beto go in and he would have seen, well first he would have put the dentures in the uh, USC students um, clam chowder and then you would have also seen Lynn Halsey Taylor performing on the front stage and you would have also, believe it or not, you would have also gotten to see Orville try and pull the same move when Philo ends up taking Lynn Halsey Taylor home. Now they happen to have the door open. I'm going to go in and ask if they'll let me just see what the inside looks like. They actually told me I can, so now it's a banquet rehearsal hall. But this is how it would have been set up, and look at the stage. You can tell where the bar was. The bar was right here, where they would have all been sitting around. And, uh, Actually, yeah, I mean, they pretty much kept the same layout. You would have seen Philo and Orville drinking right there. And then uh, Philo, right around here, is where he would have been sitting with the uh, woman with the clam chowder where he invites himself to sit. And then that's the famous stage. Now, one of the stories I didn't get to tell you guys was that one night, like Bob Dylan and a handful of really famous musicians just got up and jammed one night. And um, from the time that Jerry Lee Lewis lived out here, or he would come out here and played here, he played here every year from like 1959 till 1987. He played a show at least once a year here. So this was the Hoyt Axton, Flying Burrito Brothers, all those famous bands. This was their... This was the place to play. And in fact, Frank Zappa mentions this song in San Bernardino. The Palomino Club. Wow, so cool. If you're interested in more of the history, go look up, uh, go look on Wikipedia. I'm so, that is so cool to see that stage. Now the very first scene we would have seen of the Palomino Club is right here. It had a big, huge sign that told who was going to perform the upcoming acts, and then they had this big neon Palomino Club sign. And I've actually tracked down where that is. It's in a museum in the valley, so at some point I'm going to go over there and show you guys. And that's what the front of it looks like now. And I'll post some pictures of what it looked like in the movie and in its heyday. But what a piece of music history. You know, 30, 30 years of the most famous country western bands of all time. And then pretty much five to ten years of the most influential SST punk bands of all time. Well, I gotta go buy Joss some food and so I'm gonna walk down to the grocery store. It's about six, seven blocks away. You know, that is absolute BS when they say nobody walks in LA. I walk everywhere. I, I break the mold on all those LA sayings. 
It is 8 o'clock, smack dab on the button. And that's really not that bad of traffic for a Friday night in LA. Wonder what gives. Where's everybody at? Are they in your town? Oh, you know, just parking my boat on the street. You know, I wouldn't, uh, actually wouldn't put it past somebody to be living in there. There's the double-decker tour bus. Never ridden in that. I actually, I heard they went out of business. I guess they didn't. Here we go. The grocery store is always an entertaining time for me. There we go. That's what Clyde likes. <laughs> This is one of those virtual ski businesses where they turn on like the, the screen in there and then you ski on it. Like these guys are. Every once in a while there's somebody in here, but not very often. Speaking of fire hose.